Good afternoon. Welcome to Life on the Light Side. How is it where you are? There's big storms going on across the country. Right this minute, we have got some sunshine, and I'm happy about that. It was a little rainy, icy, slippery last night, but it's warm enough, unseasonably warm, as they say, that uh, that's not a problem today. I know I have friends in Texas who are without power and Louisiana, I think they are saying they're having rolling, rolling blackouts. Wow. And on such a day as today is, we know what today is, right? It's Mardi Gras. And uh, so I want to look at our national day calendar because there are some interesting things, uh, and some of them are very related. Um, it is Fat Tuesday, and Fat Tuesday, the day before uh, Lent begins, um, we have uh, we have a like you eat, you go crazy. One of the very practical purposes was to get the fat stuff out of the house and prepare to sacrifice. That means it's the last day of carnival. Did you know one of the parts of uh, going through the Lent is uh, not eating meat or not eating much meat? Well, I haven't had meat in 40 some odd years, so that's not an issue for me. But the word carne for, for carnival, uh, it has to do with letting go of the meat for the next 40 days. In fact, that's how I started my path to being a vegetarian. I am not a vegan. I do use uh, dairy products and uh, um, eggs. Uh, I don't eat, I don't like eggs, you know, but I don't, I like them mixed up and stuff like pancakes, you know, that kind of thing. But, um, so, uh, yes, and Cheryl says, yes, Shrove Tuesday means pancakes for dinner at my church. But we all need to eat them at home this year. That's the truth. I'm thinking of pancakes for supper. My pancakes will be very different because my daughter sent me some um, chocolate, dark chocolate pancake mix. Ooh, ooh, ooh. And I'm going to have that with raspberry sauce, uh, you know, like syrup, raspberry syrup. So I'm pretty excited about that. And uh, I'll be staying in the celebration. One of the ideas is that you're going to you're going to pig out now because then comes the uh, fast and uh, fast and abstinence. We abstain from eating and doing certain things and we fast. Uh, from eating meat. And we also have smaller meals. Um, a lot of the churches, uh, faith, faith groups, uh, have very, very strict rules about having just one actual meal a day and two smaller ones. You know, well, that wouldn't hurt me any. Of course, when you get to be on the older side, you are not called on to abide by that because you are older and needs your nutrition. However, I am planning to do some cutting back and uh, I have to do some real serious thinking about the things I want to cut back on. One of the points of cutting back is to make ourselves a better person, maybe a healthier person, to do things that will... Um, lift us spiritually. Now, the word sacrifice means to make holy, to lift up, and we're going to do something maybe painful, but it's going to lift us up spiritually. So if you look at what you want, ah, see, Anna said she made vegetable pancakes for breakfast. Mm, sounds interesting. Like I know I love potato pancakes. So anyway, uh, getting back to uh, sacrificing and making yourself a better person. 
um, you have to ask yourself, what do I want to do that will make me lighter? <gasps> Life on the light side. So what will bring you up on the light side? Well, what's bringing you down? Cut it out. Now, there's a very important thing we have to pay attention to when we go through Lent and give something up. I'll always remember my second grade experience when my teacher was talking about Lent, which you could do in those days, which you probably can't do anymore. And uh, she said, uh, well, she asked everybody, what are they giving up for Lent? And uh, I raised my hand and she said, what are you giving up? I said, carrots. And she said, carrots. I said, yeah, I don't like carrots. Well, <laughs> I think I was just trying to be a smart butt because I do like carrots. And uh, I wasn't going to give them up. <laughs> but as a good little Catholic girl, I was certainly encouraged to give things up. Now, however, we've talked about this before. If we take something out, we must replace it or we will feel lack where our human nature may replace it with something maybe even more unhealthy or lazy than what we gave up. You also remember, every time we declare change that we're going to do something for the better, all that is unlike it comes up for healing. Why does that have to happen? Why does it have to come up for healing? Well, because if it doesn't come up for healing, you can't heal it, right? So think about that. If you're going to give something up, what are you going to put in its place? One of the things I decided I have to give up, and this is, it's, it's not the way it sounds. Um, I keep the TV on in the background all the time, just kind of, uh, room noise, company, whatever you want to say. But the thing is, you also get sucked into it and you walk over and see what's happening or, you know, something like that. And um, so I decided that has got to go. So I'm going to create this void. What am I going to put into it so that it doesn't get filled with something worse? Well, I've got a couple of bookcases that need some work. And I, so one of the things I'm going to add to that I'm going to um, take out the TV background noise, I'm going to replace that uh, with some reading. And because I like background noise, I am going to... Um, to listen to some books. I've got Audible and I have a bunch of books that are waiting to be heard. And the thing with that is I definitely pick, there's no commercials, and I pick the content that I will receive. And I've got a few books that are um, spiritually grounded that I really wanted to look at. So those are a couple of things that I am replacing. Now, a lot of people, replacing with, uh, a lot of people give up a, a food that they, or a treat or something that they want to make themselves healthier. But if you take something away and you don't replace it with something good, again, you're going to get into a negative feeling of your being deprived and being punished instead of making something holier. You know, when I think about the early uh, people of the church um, who would uh, beat themselves, they would punish their flesh for having desires, whether it's appetite for food or sleep or sex or whatever. So they would have this little stick <clears throat> with the little uh, leather straps and something on the end that would be hit you hard and they would do this and they would hit themselves on the back to punish the flesh for being so weak. Well, no, that's not in my, in my plan. So, um, 
And I'm not quite sure where I'm going to go with replacing one kind of food for another. Maybe the sacrifice of the uh, negative input in my brain, um, that'll be quite enough. You know, don't give up like everything in the world, you know. So back to how I became a vegetarian, I gave up um, meat for Lent. At that time, I was still uh, practicing Catholic. And I said, what am I going to give up for Lent? And I said, oh, I'm going to give up meat. And I, now I still cooked meat for my family. I did not make them abide in my choice. And I had so made up my mind that it wasn't even hard. You know, I gave it up and it was like, okay. And, but you have to find all new kinds of recipes. Like <clears throat> a lot of people fail when they decide they're going to improve their diet because they don't know what to make. And it's easy to get into a food rut. Oh my goodness. Why? Because you can throw things together by habit. I'm so happy to say that being in our state of isolation or confinement this past year, um, I have learned about cooking things and I've learned so much about it. And I've made so many new things. And that was really uh, exciting. And I've been sharing with my sister and been putting stuff in the freezer for during summer when we're not going to feel like cooking, I can assure you. So I'm just going to, but my, my repertoire has expanded dramatically. Now that brings me to looking a little further. Um, okay, so it's a lot of times when you get rid of the goodies in the house. So if you're going to pig out, matter of fact, a thought just hit my mind of something I'm going to pig out on uh, after I'm done with this. <laughs> so I can get that out of my house until Lent is over. Um, it is also do a grouch a favor day. Now, there's only me and Tish in the house. So, and I don't tend to be grumpy. So I'm not sure how I'm going to deal with that one. But um, <clears throat> if you have a grouch in your life and someone that maybe kind of tap dances on your nerves, you might want to Give them a call if you can't see them. Hey, just checking in, seeing how you're doing. Lord knows we got people across the country to check in on with the crazy, freezing, nasty, stormy weather. <clears throat> and a lot of blessings to have that it didn't get us. So think of a grouch. Maybe you could send a card or an e-card if you don't feel like actually talking to them. Stretch. It's good for you. It is uh, National Pancake Day at IHOP, and they do a fundraising thing. So if there's an IHOP near you, uh, they make donations for the pancakes today. Call them, make sure they're participating, make sure they're open, or <clears throat> if they're doing take-home, take-out recipe, you know, take-out orders. It is Almond Day. Now, Edgar Casey, who was known as the sleeping prophet, who did all kinds of cures for things in people for people in a sleep state, one time said that if you ate three raw almonds every day, that you would um, you would avoid cancer. Now I never tried it, but I do like almonds, and I eat them not as frequently as walnuts. Why? Walnuts and pecans are considerably fattier. Therefore, I like them more. But I don't, but I like almonds and they're great. Um, I have a bag of almonds in my cupboard with my goodies, but I, um, I'm not going to hit on that because I've got a nut bowl with some almonds in it and I'm going to eat those. You know, that might be a choice that would be perfect for your Lent change to eat nuts instead of other kinds of snacks like chips or cookies or whatever. 
And if you get nuts in the shell, it occupies you. You have to crack them open and chew them up and uh, and all in all, it's it's good for you. So why do you think about that? National Almond Day. Make some green beans, almondine. Yeah, there's many choices. And it is also um, Pushke and Fasnacht Day. Now, Pushke and, and Fasnacht Days are German and Polish, uh, respectively. And they are like donuts. Now, there was pictures of Pushke's, uh, Pushke's depends how you pronounce it, um, all over. And I thought, oh, I'm going to make some. That would be so cool. And I looked up the recipe and I was doing okay until I came to the part that said I would need two quarts of oil to fry the donuts. And then I had this sudden, uh, oh, big awakening because I don't eat much fried food. I mean, <clears throat> if I go out, excuse me, if I go out, I may get something fried because I don't tend to make it at home. I don't tend to make it at home because amongst other things, it's heavy and it's messy and, uh, and it's it's fatty and it tastes good going down then it sometimes lands like a brick in your belly so i didn't want i didn't want that and i also i think i mentioned this just the other day um i as i was thinking about these donuts i remember two instances the last time i made donuts was probably about 16 or 17 years ago and i made them at my buddy kim's house in Texas. And uh, I remember frying those donuts. And honestly, the house was filled with that oily, smoky, heavy air. And I said, Ooh, I didn't want to do that. And the second thing is, I remember from back in my meat eating days when I would be more inclined to fry something bacon, steak, pork chops, chicken, whatever. And when I would go to uh, dust my my glasses and things that I had on shelves, they had a greasy film. You could not wash them. Now, mind you, I did not fry a ton of food, but it doesn't take much for those little greasy particles to get in the air. So needless to say, I'm not doing any of that today. Um, so that that is all about our uh I'll make sure I didn't miss anything. Yeah, that's it for our national day calendar. Now, if you're going to be going out, you might want to pick up some of those donuts and give yourself a treat. Um, if you're near a Dunkin' Donut, but they don't make them the same. That Pushke Pushke, they are very different. They they just are. You know, when I was a kid, uh, we lived, my my grandparents lived in New Britain on the corner of Easton Pleasant Street, and we lived across town. And when we would go to visit them, we it's, it's strange to live in the same town and not see the people very often, but sad but true. But um, we'd go over there and across the street, just down the street across a little bit, was the delight bakery and it would be very late at night and my grandfather would take us over to the delight bakery and we would go around to the back and we would uh knock on the door and he his friends of his owned it and we would watch them making all those donuts for morning. They had honey dip donuts on wooden dowels, and they dip them into this honey dip, sugar dip, and pull them out and hang them on racks. And the drip would just come over them as they 
cooled and dried a little bit. Oh, and we would go home, of course, with a bag of donuts. Those memories are so precious. They're precious and they're priceless. And I'm so glad they live in my memory, my heart and my mind. And I think of my grandpa today and uh, those moments of joy he gave us. That was totally special. Ah, okay, so what am I gonna do for? Somebody said they're gonna make beans and rice, which I think must, red beans and rice, I think that must be a Southern, um, a Southern uh, Lenten celebration or whatever. I don't think we so, I don't think we had a special meal, maybe just the pancakes. Let's see, okay, well, <laughs> Uh, Cheryl says it sounds so good she wants to go get some. You can actually, if there is a Krispy Kreme near you, you can go and watch them make the donuts and they, they go on a conveyor <laughs> through that dip and get all glazed and come out the other side. And I think that's wonderful. And unfortunately, I am good for about half, one half of a Krispy Kreme donut. I I just can't do more. It makes me sick to my stomach. It's too sweet. But, um, oh, but that half is delicious. All right. So I wanted to, let's see. Oh, I got a few minutes to go yet. Um, I want to do some Mardi Gras trivia. You know how I love trivia. Now, what's with the storms and roll, rolling blackouts and everything in in Louisiana. I don't know what New Orleans is like as far as, of course, there's no parade. They had to cancel the parade because of COVID. But um, I don't know if you saw it on the news, the houses, people decorated their houses as if they were floats for the parade. So there is still something beautiful to see in New Orleans. And if you check the news, you'll probably find it, or I would not be at all surprised if there's not a YouTube video that's all about New Orleans without the <clears throat> without the um, parade. <clears throat> so, are you ready for some Mardi Gras trivia? Some of it'll be very easy. Some of it you will have no clue of because you never knew it to begin with, and some of it will be just hard to answer. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay. Now I'm looking at my quiz, so I can't be looking at you, at your answers. So um, I'm not even going to try to see if you answer, but I do invite you to see if you have the answers, type them in. <clears throat> Excuse me. Frog. Maybe I'll even check back and forth because that might be fun. Okay. What is the day before Mardi Gras called? Uh, it is called, I'll give you a second. I don't, hang on, let me scroll down. I see it's, yeah, this is not going to be possible. Okay, Cheryl's thinking. No, no, no going to Google there, Cheryl. <clears throat> okay, excuse me. It is called Lundegra. Okay, next question. And everybody knows this one. What day comes after Mardi Gras? I count to ten. Do, 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 do. Cheryl, you did not just say Monday. Day that comes after Mardi Gras is Ash Wednesday. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Ash Wednesday. And I want to give you a little bit of a metaphysical peek at Ash Wednesday. Um, you know, typically in the Catholic Church anyway, the ashes are made from the burned up palms, burned and pulverized palms of the previous years 
Palm Sunday. Okay, I'm behind. Yeah, I am behind. It takes a while to catch up. Sorry about that. Okay, so um, metaphysically, you know, a lot of people say, oh, I don't want anything to do with those church traditions. They're, they're just empty rituals. They're empty rituals if you see them that way. But I invite you to see it another way. You don't have to go out and get ashes. But if you want to, you can take a piece of paper and write down maybe things that you regret thinking. Because where do you put the ashes? On your forehead. Okay. So you... When you put the ashes on your forehead, they're put on with a cross, like the sign of a cross. And that means you want to cross out that kind of thinking. And ashes are what's left, <clears throat> excuse me, when something is burned up. So let's say we want to burn up, we want to purify and get rid of those kinds of thoughts. So if it floats your boat to make yourself some ashes, okay, Cheryl, if you sent directions on how to make ashes at home to your church family, would you mind private messaging them to me and I'll have them for my archives? I would appreciate it. Okay. All right. She said she included that on her directions. That's true. When we have meanings to our rituals, <clears throat> they are no longer empty rituals. Okay, and I'm going to go back to Mardi Gras trivia. This is so fun. I don't want to stop. I think I'm pretty sure I'm out. Okay. Um, oh, this is a fun one. I guarantee you don't have the answer. If you don't have, if you have the answer, I will fall off the couch. When was the earliest known carnival celebration? And the answer is 1294. Can you believe that? The earliest known carnival celebration, 1294. Wow. Okay. Now. Let's see if you know the signature Mardi Gras dessert. Do you know the signature Mardi Gras dessert? You should. Everybody knows it. Okay. Well, at, you know, it gets behind here somehow with the way that the thing works but it is called a king cake and i'm sure you have seen yes i wanted to make a king cake but that was a lot of trouble too especially for one person and i didn't have the very important thing that you hide in a king cake what is it that gets hidden in a king cake do, 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 and i knew that but also they used it in the most recent amazing race. So that was kind of fun. Okay, I'm going to give a minute for an answer. I know there's some of you probably aren't typing in. Going, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. Okay, a baby, a plastic baby, a little teeny plastic baby. Now, I, as I recall, there was a time that a coin was put in the cake as good luck. But um, yeah, a little, yeah. You don't want to say a baby because it's a plastic baby because there was a time when there was, if you think that conspiracy theories are new, you are very wrong. There was a time in the early days of Christianity when they said that Christians actually would bake babies in bread and eat them as a rite of passage to get into the church. Huh. Yeah, people are crazy, down with conspiracy theories. We don't need any of that. Let's go back to trivia, lighten it up a little bit. Okay. 
All right. What are the groups? You should know. It, it, this should be easy enough. Well, well, I'm going to skip that one. Okay. A man dressed as whom was credited with popularizing throwing beads during Mardi Gras. So a man dressed as whom was credited with popularizing throwing beads at Mardi Gras. Who was that costume man? It was a jester. No, it was dressed as Santa Claus. How do you like that? Santa Claus was throwing the beads. And I'm sure they weren't telling anybody to show their stuff like they do today. I will never forget when I was in uh, my church in Texas, one of my congregation members' son got arrested for videotaping girls getting beads by showing their stuff. Well, not nice. So that's really embarrassing to have to face at church. But anyway, I'm going to let that go there because there are so many questions and they're so much fun. I wished I'd thought of it earlier. If you want to uh, check out the Mardi Gras trivia yourself, uh, just go to your search bar and type in well, I typed in Mardi Gras trivia, and here it says parade.com. But now nah, go ahead and just type in Mardi Gras trivia, and you will get to it. All right. Well, that was such fun. Uh, I hope you are a little bit more on the light side, maybe, than you were when you signed on. And I hope the rest of your day is bright. Uh, gorgeous and uh yeah you never you never saw that show your yeah yeah that people don't believe it we have to grade it a lot <laughs> hopefully if the cycle will turn and we will start to lift up again all right many blessings and i will see you tomorrow good lord willing and a great don't rise bye bye